was so bad that I couldn't lay down even in bed and shift left or right without the whole room spinning. I had to work from home for a while because I couldn't really sit in an office or even drive or feel safe. I thought I was done with that portion of my life, but here it popped back up. Um, so I went searching on YouTube and I found you and uh, gave it a chance to check a, a different type of treatment. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Hutchison and today I have Kendra with me and Kendra and I have been working together probably for almost two years. Um, Kendra, thank you so much for being willing to share part of your story. Yep. And uh, so let's just go back to the very beginning, like when you know you had your child approximately two years ago, little Vinny who's growing up so well and he's already got your you know type A personality at <laughs> age two and he's running around the parks at Disney and having so much fun. But um, you know, before you had Disney, you were before you had Vinny, you were feeling relatively well. And after you had Vinny, kind of what happened and what led you up to? Yeah. So I had had various drop attacks since I was two years old. That's when the first one started. Um, it happened throughout my life. And then probably once I was 16 to 18, they stopped for a good 10 to 12 years. Um, after I had my son two years ago, uh, I had another drop attack three months after having him. Um, not sure if it was due to the stress of, you know, carrying a baby, birth, or looking down as much. Um, you know, I thought I was done with that portion of my life, but here it popped back up. Um, so I went searching on YouTube and I found you and uh, gave it a chance to check a, a different type of treatment. So um, I had tried prolotherapy. Um, you introduced the neck weights to me, which made a huge difference. Um, and then we kept adjusting the neck weights. It, it felt like it was better at some point, but you know, it was so bad that I couldn't lay down even in bed and shift left or right without the whole room spinning. Um, I couldn't really look down at my son or, or pick up my son for a while, lay on the floor and play with him. There was just a lot of uh, things that I was restricted for doing once once this popped up because I just had constant dizziness. Um, I had to work from home for a while because I couldn't really sit in an office or even drive or feel safe. Um, the initial testing of my blood flow showed that I was high risk for a stroke. So um, it was it was life changing to meet you and to start to use the neck weights. And then um, it felt like. We just still needed to tweak a little bit, which is when we looked into the dry needling. Um, I, I was definitely skeptical at first, um, you know, after going through a treatment like prolotherapy, which felt um, like very I don't know, extreme. Dry needling felt, I was a little skeptical at first, to be honest, um, but you said, trust me. And so I said, <laughs> okay, let's do it. You've been right this far, so let's, let's keep trying it. Um, so I think we've been doing dry needling for about a year now. Yep. And I would say I feel pretty much 98 to 100%. Wow, that's incredible. Yep. And just to kind of come back on a couple of points you brought up was that even once we hit fit you for neck weights, you got periods of time where you noticed significant reduction in that general dizziness, mm -hmm. but it would return. Mm -hmm. And so we knew that we were in the right kind of mindset that this was coming structural. Yep. That the dizziness definitely, if we had your neck in exactly the right position, at least for a period of time, yep. you didn't express any of the symptoms. Um, but it would return and so we were getting frustrated because it was like back and forth and we were kind of stuck. And um, and you had, like you said, you had done you know the prolotherapy, which also was still, you know, you still were coming back into the symptoms. Um, we found something interesting on your DMX between the C0, C1, where it seemed like I thought that there was tendinopathy that was contributing to your sense of dizziness. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting, when you brought up the dry needling, I just want to make it clear that it's really important that with the dry needling to bring changes like Kendra's, where she has 98 to 100% resolution of symptoms, yeah. that it's done with a very unique technique where you target just the tendons. If you're focused primarily, had you had dry needling done by anybody else, sir? Yeah. No, just with me. So if you focus on the muscle belly and you have tendinopathy, the muscle's gonna relax and you may get a momentary improvement in symptoms. However, when the tendons are degenerated, they send a signal to the muscle not to use that muscle because the tendon is trying to preserve its integrity to the bone. So you never have a tendon rupture. I mean, you've heard of somebody rupturing their Achilles tendon, right? Can they walk after they get that ruptured? Like, do you think you can take a step after your Achilles tendon ruptures off the bone? I don't think no. No, you can't. <laughs> and so imagine if the 
tendons that connect to your skull ruptured. Like you wouldn't be able to hold your head up at all and you'd have to immediately get to emergency surgery. Depending, on maybe one small one you could get away with for a little while, but it could be life-threatening. So your body's so intuitively designed that it knows to protect that tendon from rupture. And yes, and so, to, and it, so it causes changes in the muscle not to use it to kind of contract it down so it's tighter, it gets dehydrated. And then the suboccipital area is so important for the connection between your visual system, your sense of balance, your vestibular system, you know, feeling if, if you feel nauseous, dizzy. Yeah. And um, so when you say we've been doing the dry needling for a year, you do live, you know, three hours away. You live up in Orlando. Yeah. And, um, but we've probably only done it, how many times, Kendra? Four or five? Four or five yeah. times. Yeah. And so you've had large gaps between care. Yes. You're feeling 98 to 100 percent better. Yeah. We're here to fine tune today just a couple of little things yeah. to really get you ready, just to have you know full full confidence and um, really. I mean, do you want to share what you're looking forward to? Um, oh, like for trying for baby two? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, eventually trying for baby two pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been a big thing that. Kendra and her husband have been like really eager for when she feels 100% better because of the fact that these symptoms came about after her first pregnancy. Yes. Changes in elastin, you know, stretching of tendons and ligaments and, and connective tissue getting a little bit more lax after, during and after pregnancy. Yeah. So it's so amazing because not only have you gotten your life back, but you're pretty much ready to go ahead and start trying for baby number two. So. Yeah. Um, and I know if anything pops up after baby two, right where I'm going to come, it will get me right back on track. So Excellent. Yep. Good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that that's the general uh, gist of the story was that um, the missing link here for Kendra's case, when we had kind of exhausted how much curvature change we could make, yep. was just stimulating a couple of the tendons in exactly the right way. And now she's back to feeling 100 percent. So. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to share? Or, I mean, that's a pretty good Just, story. Just, you know, for anyone that's on a journey, I know it's frustrating, it's hard. Mine felt like it was forever. Uh, looking back, it's going to be a short blip, you know, of my lifetime, but it's very impactful to the point where I felt like, okay, my only other option here is to turn to, to surgery before we went to dry needling. So I'm very, very happy that um, I just took the chance on dry needling. I said, okay, this is the last thing I'm going to try, then we'll look into surgery. But um, surgery definitely isn't needed, and so I'm just very thankful that you know you convinced me to stick with it. So thank awesome. you. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Kendra. Yeah. I'm just very delighted that you're feeling so much better.